千万，低调，知名度不高。问起美国的路人，知道 Janet Yellen 是谁，大多数的人并不知道。但是她即将成为全世界在经济决策里头最重要的女人之一。唯一跟她可以相提并论的是德国的总理梅克尔。另外一位我们要为大家介绍的是美国每个路人几乎都应该会认得的 Barbara Walters。她在二零一三年的五月宣布，一年之后，也就是二零一四年的五月，她即将退休，正式的离开荧光幕。算起来，她总共在美国的电视界。总共纵横多少年呢？你难以置信，五十二年。最近他决不决定要退休？退休之前呢，他来到了耶鲁大学，对他们进行了一场演讲。这场演讲，他回忆了他一生从事新闻记者工作，作为一位主持人的时候，他最难忘的几位访问过的人物。一代电视女王芭芭拉·华特斯，二零一三年五月在自己的节目里宣布退休。A year from now, I plan to retire from appearing on television at all. It has been an absolutely joyful, rewarding, challenging, fascinating, and occasionally bumpy ride, and I wouldn't change a thing. 芭芭拉·华特斯纵横电视圈超过五十年。一九六一年获聘为国家广播公司《今日》节目撰稿，踏入电视界，后来成为第一位在晨间节目亮相的女主持人。一九七六年跳槽 ABC 新闻部，年薪一百万美元，轰动全美，首开先例，成为晚间电视新闻共同主播。一九七九年开始共同主持 ABC Twenty Twenty， 访问过尼克森之后的每位美国总统与第一夫人。Are you sorry you didn't burn the tapes? Yes, I think so. He 毫不畏惧向世界各国领导人提出尖锐问题。Do you ever order anyone killed? 在 Twenty Twenty 节目长达二十八年，无数次独家采访，被誉为美国电视新闻第一夫人。一九九七年，他重心转到 The View 谈话性节目。这也成为他电视生涯的据点。I want instead to sit on a sunny field and admire the very gifted women, and okay, some men too, who will be taking my place. 二零一二年，他向耶鲁大学毕业生发表引起众多掌声和笑声的演说。A few years ago, I wrote my memoir. It was called Audition, because to me, life has been a continuous audition. And while writing the book, I had to do some research on my family,、uh, including my paternal grandmother Lily, whom I had never met. She was evidently a very elegant and fastidious woman. And on her deathbed, she turned to her seven children and told them that she was a virgin. And they said, "Well, how is that possible? We are here, three sons and four daughters." You must have done something with Grandpa, and she said, "Yes, I did, but I never participated." So, so when I was asked if I would come here today to talk with you, I said to myself, "These kids are smarter than I am. These kids are younger than I am." They are better educated, but by God, I am going to participate. So, and I have interviewed world leaders from Fidel Castro to Vladimir Putin, and this past December, Syria's Bashir Assad. So I, I should know something about leadership and some message that I could give you. But I decided that what I could offer you most today is the wisdom. And the stories of some of the most thoughtful people that I have been fortunate enough to talk with over the years, for I think their words, rather than just mine, may help to answer your own questions and your own quest for bliss. It was an immediate attraction, and it was just a, a life-changing experience to have met him from day one. From day one.、Yeah. This from an interview with Hillary Clinton in 2005. Your life has been about taking chances and making choices, Mrs. Clinton. What was the biggest choice that you had to make? She said, "Staying married to my husband." I'm often asked why Bill and I have stayed together. All I know is that nobody understands me better. No one can make me laugh the way Bill does. Even after all these years, he is still the most interesting, energizing, and fully alive person I have ever met. Everyone has a choice every single day about how to live your life, 
And I know that many people looking at my life would say, oh my goodness, how tough. I look at it differently. I look at the lessons that I've learned, the opportunities that I've had. Are you a god? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? Today, very day, my eye a little irritation. <laughs> so <laughs> if I'm god, that, that should not happen. You can say, let that go away. <laughs> I talked to a great many religious leaders from the different faiths. Most said the purpose of life is to go to heaven or to paradise. The Dalai Lama, however, when I asked, said, the purpose of life is to be happy. And how do you get to be happy? Through compassion, he said, and warm-heartedness. You achieve those qualities in part by abandoning all negative thoughts and feelings of competition. So for about three days after the interview, I practiced what the Dalai Lama had taught me. I practiced compassion. I was extremely warm-hearted. I was not jealous. I had no negative thinking. I smiled a lot. I was so warm-hearted, and I was exceedingly boring. <laughs> but in truth, the Dalai Lama did give me a lot to aspire to. His was not a lesson lost. Compassion and warm-heartedness, so simple and so hard to do. But I've tried to practice both. And what kind of a tree are you? If you think you're a tree now. Oh, I like that everybody would like to be an oak tree. I said, is it so hard to have it all? The marriage, the children, the career? I said, I think myself, it's very tough. Much of my life has been a balancing act. She said, it's impossible. If I were a man, I would not marry a woman with a career, and I would torture myself as a mother. Suppose little Johnny or little Katie had the mumps and I had an opening night, I'd want to strangle the children. I would really want to strangle the children. <laughs> and I'd be thinking to myself, God, I've got to get into the mood, and what's the matter with him? And then out of my way, you see? And I said, if you were a man, you would not marry a woman with a career? She said, I wouldn't be that big a fool. I'd want her to be interested in me, not a career. And a career is fascinating. I don't know what the hell the women are going to do, or the men. So welcome to the life of choices. I think we should explain to people a little bit about how you talk and how you breathe. There's a respirator that helps you breathe. Right behind the chair is a respirator which generates air. Mm -hmm. 1995, when his horse failed to jump over a hurdle in a riding competition, the horse fell, he fell with it, and he found himself completely paralyzed from the neck down. This man who had been this adventurer, an actor, an athlete, and his wife came into him and she said, Chris, if you want us, we will find the way to pull the plug. And he was lying in bed with the tubes, completely immobile. She said, remember, you are still you, which had two connotations. You are still you, and you are still you. And she left the room, and a doctor came in in a white coat with a heavy accent, and the doctor said, I'm a proctologist, turn over. And Reeve looked at this doctor as if he were insane, and the doctor said, I told you, I told you, turn over. And as he was about to try to find some way of, of getting a nurse or someone instead of this crazy doctor, he looked up and he realized it was Robin Williams. <laughs> he had gone to Juilliard with Robin Williams and he burst out laughing. And he said, if I can laugh, I can live. These are the words of Christopher Reeve. You gradually discover, as I'm discovering, that your body is not you, and the mind and the spirit must take over. And that's the challenge as you move from obsessing about why me, and it's not fair, and when will I move again and move into, well, what is the potential? And now I see opportunities and potential I wasn't capable of seeing, because every moment is more intense and valuable than it ever was. And finally, whatever hand you are dealt, I hope you will find the game worthwhile. I do. And really, have I been happier with the hand that I have been dealt.
than I am today with the honor and pleasure of meeting you. I thank you and I hope that your life will be like a great white oak. I thank you. Thank you.